So today we are going to be practicing just doing some negative painting. We're not trying to make a masterpiece today. We're just playing and having fun. So the first thing we do is we just wet our paper. Then we start applying some yellow to where the daffodils are and then some greens and some blues and maybe even some purples to the background. Again, we are not trying to make a masterpiece. We are just practicing our negative painting. And the first thing I'm doing with this one is I'm just getting down a layer of color and having that be our background. Now, if you're on Instagram, please follow me at Art with Viv. At least consider it. All right, so we're getting our colors down. And we're not worrying about them. It's wet on wet. The whole paper is wet. We're just letting the colors bleed together and it's okay because we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna start kind of refining it. That's what um, negative painting is about. It's sort of painting around the subject instead of painting the actual subject. And a lot of people are really interested in negative painting. So I'm just doing a little blurb here about it again on my channel. Um, because it is kind of sometimes people have a little bit hard time grasping the concept so I figure if you see me do it in different in different paintings in different ways then you know one of those ways is gonna click with you so here I have let it dry completely and I'm just going in the background and I'm just painting the background and I'm painting around the leaves around the flowers and as you see that darkens the background and it um, makes those leaves in the subject come forward so we're not actually painting the subject we're painting the background that's what negative painting is all about so I'm just adding different colors I'm not really being careful I am trying to keep it unified like if I go under a, a leaf or anything I try to carry that same color underneath it to the other side just so that it you know has a little bit of unity and I'm working in this corner there's a little a little bud there you can see I just painted around it and it came forward and you could see it so now we're just painting around just painting around the um, greenery the leaves and it's not really difficult it's just a matter of doing it the main thing is let that first layer dry you could wet your whole paper for the second layer but I just didn't I'm doing this really quick really messy really loose so I didn't really get into the whole wetting it up again and once I get all of that done in the background I decide that I need some more some more leaves so I'm just gonna come in and draw some I'm making sure that it's dark enough for you to see normally I wouldn't do that dark but you know I want you to be able to see what I'm doing and I just feel like it needs more movement behind it so I'm just adding some more leaves I'm just drawing them in and then I'm gonna start painting around them and um, that's it so I hope y'all are doing really well today if if you're painting today tell yourself you're doing a good job give yourself a pat on on the back even for starting a painting if you start a painting today congratulate yourself because that is the hardest part is to get started so now I'm just painting in just little tiny sections painting all around those leaves that I just drew in and again I'm just mixing the colors the blue the purple the green I'm just um, letting them blend wet and wet onto each other in these little tiny areas and you can start to see the flowers come through and they are starting to take shape as we work around the background and I don't even care that some of the green has bled into the yellow of the flowers or some of the purple has I don't care because this is just a practice and it's just something loose and free sort of just a little practice exercise for me and for you if you want to try it just to get the hang of um, negative painting that's it so I'm just really getting this corner dark I'm and that the darker I go then the further in front that little bud that hasn't opened yet is coming and I'm just working my way around the whole painting and 
I don't really have a reference photo for this. This one is just one I drew because I knew I didn't want it to be really realistic. I just wanted it to be fun. And that's the most important part, people. Have fun painting. You don't have to just put so much pressure on yourself that it has to come out perfect every time. And if nothing else, I hope you learn that from my channel, that just do it. Doing it is the important thing. So now that I've done the background, and we are gonna skip over to the flowers here, and I'm just adding some yellows and some oranges, adding some shadows. Again, not working toward realistic, just working into a nice, loose painting, just enough that you know that that is a daffodil. So I am putting in the shadows and then just taking my brush with some clean water and blending those shadows out so that there's not a hard edge on one side. Now I want that hard edge on the side where it is right underneath the, where the petal ruffles are because I want to define those petal ruffles. Then I'm also adding some shadows and I'm using some orange mixed with my yellow. I'm adding some shadows just to sort of separate the petals and the flowers from each other. I'm making sure that I make it darker toward the center and lighter as it goes out toward the end of the petal. And I'm painting in this, the center part of that little trumpet shape that's on all daffodils. Well, I don't know, some daffodils have sort of this ruffly center that's really pretty. I have some of those in my yard. And so I'm just adding shadows, just sort of bringing the flowers a little more dimension. Again, not trying to make them super realistic. Just work. You could stop right here if you wanted to and you'd have a nice painting. Um, but I'm just taking it to the next level. Now I've added a little bit more and that is cadmium yellow, which you can tell because it is not that transparent. It's sort of opaque, semi-opaque. So I'm adding some cadmium yellow in there really just to punch up the colors because I feel like that light yellow is, is not strong enough to compete with all that stuff going on in the background. So I decided to really punch up the colors. I added a really bright orange to the shadows, really um, opaque sort of yellow there, which I'm pretty sure that was cadmium yellow. I really like that better. It really um, lets those flowers stand on their own, whereas before they were they were kind of competing with all that stuff going on in the background. So as you paint, think about that. Look look at your subject, look at your background, and see how it works as a whole. Everything should work together and look nice, even on your practice paintings, if you can. If not, oh. You know, it's just paper, it's just paint. You could do it again. So I'm continuing with the shadows and I like how it's coming out. It's not my most favorite painting, but I just, just playing around. And that is one thing you should always do is play because when you play, you learn. That is one of play experiments. That is one of the best ways to learn and fail. I want you to fail every day. Failure is how you succeed. The more you try something, the more you fail, the more you learn that doesn't work and that gets you on a quicker path to what does work. So don't be afraid of making an ugly painting. I'm not. I make them all the time. So just get in there and practice and experiment and fail and then try again and soon you will you will see the results i promise you that so i'm just adding some details here and there i'm adding a little bit more yellow to that to that bud i'm darkening up some of the shadows on the flowers and just taking some of the yellow and blending it wet into wet there and so that it's not so harsh and i'm just putting on the orange and then i blend it in with some yellow now I want to separate the flower from that background leaf, so I just put a little dark green right on the edge and blended it down the leaf, making the centers a little darker with some of that orange. Then we're going to keep on adding a little bit darker. Now I just think it just needs some lines. You could stop right here if you wanted to, but I am putting in some shadows with just some texture. Um, totally optional. I just wanted to do it just to Again, experiment, probably not my best idea, but hey, again, if I don't do it 
and show you that it's okay to experiment and maybe not make the best painting, then who will? You have to experiment. That is, I think that's my word today, experiment. Y'all get the experimenting out there. Anyway, I've got my texture going on. I don't really hate it. I don't really love it. It's okay. But I have to remind myself that, you know, maybe next time I might not do that. But this time I'm going to just keep at it and see where it ends. I think I'm still overall pretty happy with this painting though. And I think it's worth you giving it a try. And you can adjust however you want. You don't have to copy exactly. As a matter of fact, I would love it if you find your own style. So we are getting close to finishing here. I'm just separating some of those leaves in the background from each other with just a little shadow work and then blending it out. And it's looking pretty good. I'm liking it. It's, it's a really nice practice painting and I hope that y'all practice this as well. I would love to see it. You can come over and join my Facebook group, Art with Viv Insiders, if you want to and post your painting if you try it. And um, yeah, we're almost finished. I'm just darkening up some era areas and there you go. We have got some beautiful spring daffodils that we have done negative painting with. So thanks for watching and please consider subscribing or sharing this with a friend if you know someone else that would like this. Okay, see you next Monday.